Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zoratustra, broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. Okie dokie. So let's... Oops. Oh, I got my... <laughs> Sorry, I have my iPad. All right, going on. So I had to turn down the volume on this one. And where is... Now I lost... Where is the Zoom? My Zoom. Okay, there is the Zoom. All right. So nice having you all back. Um, and wherever you are in the world, I hope you stay in your heart and not forget your true power, which is the power of love, which we all have been born with. Today, I would like to talk about uh, transcending the three elements that they these factors they contribute to um, our captivity and remaining a slave. So until and I'm gonna dive into this. So how can we transcend our mind? transcend our emotions and our body? How can we go beyond them? How can we become free from this idea of being a human being separated from totality? How can I just go around it? And how do I go beyond my mind so my mind is not my master anymore because the mind is a, is a very wonderful tool to have and to use but it's a horrible master and we have been slavery and captivity of our minds and all sufferings that happen in in our lives is basically is from the busy mind now, of course, there are other kinds of sufferings too, such as physical disabilities or war or stuff like that. I understand that. But generally, uh, all human beings are slaves of their thinking mind. And the thinking mind takes you into all these darknesses. And it's the very root of pretty much our loneliness, our desperation, our depression, our anxiety, our fears, our jealousy, um, all the desires that arises in us, they're all happening in the mind. And of course, you have a thought comes for you and after a thought comes the emotion or there's an emotion comes and then there's thoughts coming. So it's like, which one came first, the chicken or the egg? Anyway, in either, either way, as long as we're identified with our thinking process, we believe what we're thinking is who we are. We're in a prison. As long as you really believe whatever emotions that rising in, in you, you are them, you are these emotions, these feelings, you are in a prison. And finally, which, where is our most powerful identification resides is the idea that I am this body. I am this, I am this. This is who I am. And if this gets threatened, or if this one dies, then my life is over. So, and this is where basically what happens to us is when we're born, typically most kids around age two to three, they start to pick up an identity. 
they pick up an identity as far as the separation. This happens automatically to almost every human being on the planet. There's been a few people that this didn't happen to them, like Ananda Maimai, who was born awakened, but that's maybe one in billions. But the rest of human beings who were born, they pick up an identity around age two to three, and they start to experience life in separation. And so then things are mine. This is mine. That's yours. Don't, don't take my toy. It's mine. So, and as we start developing our society, our community, our parents, everything starts to program us in order to be thinking. So we forget to use our intuitive knowing when we're children, normally they operate from their intuition. And so we get pounded in our heads repeatedly by institutions and forcing us to shift from our heart, from intuitive knowing, from just simply being, getting forced to be thinking, thinking about future, worrying about future. What am I gonna be? What am I gonna do? Uh, what is my profession going to be? Am I gonna, I'm supposed to get married or whatever is the story, the narrative that is running in your head, it becomes the, the issue. And it's something is happening in the future, so you have to worry about it. So this transition starts to happen to most human beings on the planet. So they move from this intuitive knowing, they shift into their heads. And depending on the region of the world that you're growing up, your, your parents, uh, what kind of religion or what sort of institutions you've been exposed to, and they keep, they keep brainwashing you and keep pounding in your head that you need to worry about future, you need to think about your future, you need to think, 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 think. So already the, the seed of disaster is already seeded in our minds and it starts growing. And eventually it, it gets to a point that for a very small percentage of human beings on this planet, it comes at one certain point, the thought comes that who am I? The thought comes, where am I coming from? Where was I before I was born? Where am I gonna go after I die? And what is my real identity? Because Ordinarily, if I'm asking somebody, who are you? My name is John, my last name is Smith. I'm a carpenter, I'm a father, I'm American, I'm Norwegian. So we're identifying to labels, these labels that they put, they put on us. So naturally, if you're sitting in an airplane and you're talking to somebody and they ask you, who are you? You just say these kind of things. You're not going to say, I'm nobody, I'm consciousness. You don't say that. But overall, before you even come to that understanding, is we have an identity. And this ident we are identified with this body our name, our last name, our nationality, our sex, our way of thinking as a collective, whatever country you live in, whatever family you grew up in. So there's a deep identification to that. And as you're getting closer, you're 
you're starting on this path of awakening, this spiritual path, or you're becoming spiritual, or you're questioning, you know, becoming spiritual is just a word. It's a point of reference, but there's some sort of dissatisfaction begins to happen in our psyche, in our lives. Normally it's associated with some kind of trauma. A trauma has happened or failure. We keep failing in our marriages, in our relationships, in our um, businesses. And it just slowly, 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 as we're getting older, it forces us through deep isolation that we're isolated, we're not connecting with other people, somehow some energy, some force is forcing us to question these things. It's forcing us to look inside. You know, you buy a spiritual book or you, you start going to some seminars, you're listening to some teachers, you're curious. You want to understand why you're suffering. You want to understand why you're lonely. And you want to understand why you have all these dark thoughts or you, you get so worried all the time about everything. And there's plenty of things in the world to contribute to your worriness and loneliness and isolation. Because, you know, the world is like full of these kind of things. And it's kind of like when you don't understand and you don't have the right training and understanding of the nature of the absolute and the cosmic laws, naturally you identify very strongly with this body, which is separated from everything else, your mind which you cannot share your thoughts telepathically with other people. You don't have the ability to tap into the collective mind. So you can transfer your thoughts and your emotions to other people without explaining it or hearing their thoughts and their emotions and feeling them as well as All these are the different moments and elements that are simultaneously happening in a, in a life that we don't know, we don't have the ability of tabbing into the collective mind, the collective consciousness. And so you're isolated. And this isolation it eats you up. And if you look at it, you're always in this conversation with yourself. There's like one or two or three people in your mind and they're talking to you. One is telling you, oh yeah, you should be doing this or doing that. And the other one, if you do something and it doesn't go right, and then the other voice, the same voice come and says, oh, you're an idiot. You did this. How many times I tell you, you shouldn't be doing this blah, blah, blah. There's like this battle of two or three different persons in your head with each other always. And they're just going, going at each other like that. So first is we're lucky if we do come, come across a form of teachings that is referring to these elements. And so what, what you want to do is first the recognition of this, to recognize a couple different things, which is very, very important. So you don't waste a lot of your time running around and banging your head against the wall and keep chasing this teacher and that teacher and doing this course and that course where it doesn't take you anywhere. You're always back at where you were. 
And we're always back in this miserable state again, coming back into misery. Because, and I'm going to tell you how you can identify that so you don't need to spend so much time trying to figure it out. So any teachings that is going to, and this is a very simple thing that I discovered, is any teaching which is not pointing out into complete oneness of the self, any teachings that is telling you that come to me or come to us and we're going to give the tools that you can learn how to manifest money. You can become wealthy. So this course is about learning how you can bring money. Or this course is about giving you the tools that how you can attract your love of life, how you find your partner. Or this course or this teaching is going to help you to any, let me put it this way, anything that is indicating any kind of teachings that is indicating that you are someone separated from totality you can automatically put it away. It automatically disqualifies or any kind of teachers or books or anything that is telling you that you are someone, an individual capable of accomplishing something in your life by the power of your will immediately disqualify it, throw it away. Don't even listen to it. Shift your attention to the teachings that are indicating into going into the space of total silence of the mind. It's not promoting thinking. It's not promoting using your power of visualization. It's not promoting that you use the power of your speech in order to manifest things. Because it's reinforcing the idea that you are an individual separated from the source. You're separated. It's reinforcing that. It means you're staying in the prison. The teachings, the courses, the trainings that most of us on this planet we go and we follow and we do, they're reinforcing us to stay in the pres prison that we're in, in slavery. Because they're indicating to you that you are an individual separated of the source and as an individual, you have the power of manifesting things. You have the power to accomplish things. I know this sounds kind of weird and it's odd. I mean, those of you who've been with me, you, you resonate. But in the beginning, of, I'm just generally speaking because somebody's on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube is listening to me and they're just wondering, like, what the hell is he talking about? So this is what I realized. And it was like, my attention started to get sh shifted to go directly at the source the source of this place that there is no more thoughts or there is no identification with thoughts to become free from this battle, this story, this saga is happening in my mind all the time. The moment, let's say there is a little financial issues 
the mind starts going crazy. Oh, what's going to happen to me? I'm going to run out of money. Who's going to take care of me? What's going to happen to me five years from now? Am I going to be on the street? Blah, 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 blah. Something happens in a relationship with someone I'm seeing. Again, oh, what if she leaves me? What's going to happen to me? It's what if she goes with another man? Again, everything comes back to this me, this me who thinks is separated. Or you're planning on going, I don't know, I'm, I'm coming on a tour. I'm going to go to Poland in 10, 11 days. And there's like three countries I'm going to. There's five workshops. There's like 11 events. And something, I get some news that something's not happening. Something fell apart. This is not happening. The mind starts spinning. Like, what's going to happen? Da, 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 blah, 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 blah. All this stuff starts to rise. The mind starts going crazy. And that's just internal stuff. Forget about external stuff. All these stories about these wars are happening. You know, whatever, Russia with Ukraine or right now, Israel with Iran and blah, blah, blah. And is this going to lead to a second, a third world war? And are they going to nuke each other? What's going to happen to me? Everything comes back to you. If you pay attention, your mind comes and tells you, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to this world? What's going to happen to us? So then it starts to panic. Then you're turning on the TV or you go on the internet and you're listening to some kind of news. And the news is designed to create fear. All kinds of fears. Oh, there's global warming coming. We're losing our forest. There's not going to be enough water in our rivers. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. Blah, 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 blah. And then all of these things activates your mind more. And it creates anxiety and fear. And ultimately, it takes you into isolation. Or you get together with your friends who are like-minded and you're feeding off of the stories. Tell me what's going on. Oh, they're going to be doing this or they're going to move, move troops. Oh, China is going to attack Taiwan. Blah, 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 blah. All these stuff. Or there's a new pandemic coming and they're talking about this and that. Or all these conversations about Trump is going to win the presidency and oh my God, what's going to happen? They're all activating your mind. They're all happening in separation. And, that, and everything is keeping you into this prison. So if you begin to recognize this, that, okay, I want to follow a teaching. I want to follow a path that is leading me into freedom and leading me into this understanding that I am not separated from anything. In fact, everything is happening in the universe is a part of me. I am a part of it. It's myself. All the terrorists in the world is myself. All the viruses in the world are myself. All the darkness in the world is myself. All the light in the world is myself. I am. And no thoughts, no stories. Why is this happening? Why is existence created like this? Why does all this stuff need to happen? No, you transcend your mind, transcending it by incorporating 
your new point of view, you start looking at things differently. It's just the shift of how you look at something. Nothing else extraordinarily happens. What happens is how you're looking at things. Ordinary person looking as, at things as if they have a free will, they're in control of their lives, they must take action, they must be doing this and doing that, they have to worry about their future, their savings, their retirement, they have to worry about all the stuff. That's ordinary human being does that. They're in the prison. The one who has transcended this, they're in trust, state of trust, recognizing that Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the power, the one that has created this life, the one who's running this show, this intelligence beyond my understanding and your understanding. There is a supreme intelligence here that was here operating before you and I were born. And it's gonna be operating the whole thing after you and I physically die. Something is running this show and obviously knows what it's doing. Because trillions and trillions of human beings have come, they were born and then they died and life continues going. It continues, it doesn't stop. And I'm not separated from it. The only reason I feel separated is because my thinking mind, my mind is thinking and is telling me I am someone separated because this is the apparent experience I have. I'm separated from this remote. I'm not one with it. it we're, we're not one. This is not Zarathustra. It's an object. It, this is an object that belongs to me. But also, this is an object that belongs to me. I'm not talking about the shirt. I'm talking about this one. This is also an object that belongs to me. Because when you refer to your body, you don't say me. If you break your elbow, you don't say, I am broken. You say, I broke my elbow. I broke my hand. I need a knee replacement. You're, you don't say, I need to be replaced. You say, I need a knee replacement. I need a, My mother just went to the hospital for a hip replacement. They didn't replace my mother. They replaced her hip. So when you're speaking and you have, let's say, a headache, you say, I have a headache, headache. You're not referring to your body as you. You're referring to your body as an object that belongs to you. And when you're talking about your emotions, your feelings are hurt. You don't say, I, I hurt. It just kind of doesn't, doesn't make sense. You say, my, my feelings are hurt. Zarathustra, so you did this and you broke my heart. You did this shitty thing and, you, and my feelings are hurt. Your feelings are insulted. Your feelings. You're referring to your feelings as an object that belongs to you. You're not referring to you. And then when it's your mind is very busy, something has happened, same thing. People come to me and they say, help me, Zarathustra, please help me. My mind drives me crazy. 
I have all these thoughts. I have all these thoughts. You know what? I have these things. I got this, I got this, I got this. I have two remotes. I have all these things. I have all these thoughts. Again, you're referring to them as objects. So where are you then? Where is, where is your seat? Where is your throne? Where is this you that owns these things? Where does this you reside? Where is its home? You may say, oh, I'm here. Oh, okay. Or I'm here. Let's investigate that. Let's look at it. Let's kind of dig a little bit deeper and not settle down on the surface. Let's go deeper in there and, and get, get, do it one time in life. Really just get focused on it and get committed that I want to be done with this story forever. I want to figure this out. Where, where do I reside? Where's my seat? And if they cut my arm, let's say something happened to me and I got in a motorcycle accident and, and I lose an arm and a leg. Am I going to be less Zarathustra or I'm still going to be Zarathustra? I mean, physically, yes, I'm going to be less. But... Am I, is my consciousness, my awareness is going to be less because my leg and my arm is, is gone? No. You're still the same person. Your consciousness, your awareness doesn't get less or more because your body parts are taken away from you. If you wear your body, then if something like that happens, you have to also be less. Something happened, the people went to war and they lost their legs. So they had to cut their legs. We've seen this. There's people, you know, or they were born with no arms and no legs. There's a spiritual teacher. I've seen him here and there that he doesn't have arms and legs and is still teaching. Is that a less person? It has nothing to do with his consciousness. His consciousness is the same. So that by itself is an indication that, okay, I'm not, I'm not limited to this. And if I'm not limited to this, then by the death of this, I cannot die because I am not this. Where would I go? Because it has, my, my existence has nothing to do with this, this dude, this body, which is changing all the time. I'm able to see it changing all the time. It's up and down. Some days feels really good. Some days it doesn't feel good. And I'm observing its ups and downs, observing it, it's getting older. It's, you know, putting, putting some weight on or losing some weight. You can just observe it. Oh, I'm getting wrinkled. Oh, I'm losing hair. Da, 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 da. Oh, my hair is getting white. You're observing this mechanism changing and you make reports about it same as you're observing your emotions and you can keep you know i know a lot of people for years and years and years they're working on their emotions they're working on their traumas here in tulum is like is the maka of people working on their emotions. It's like, 
thousands of them. They're all here working on their emotions, past traumas and stuff like that. And I know people from 20, 30 years ago, they're still working on their emotions. I mean, my God, how many years do you have to work on your emotions? When is this going to end? I mean, how many courses do I need to take? Is 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, isn't it enough working on the emotions? The same past trauma stuff that happened in childhood. I mean, how much longer do you need to work on this? What is it that you can't fix or figure out? Because it's not going to end because you're identifying with it and it never is going to go away or it figured out. You have to transcend. You cannot fix your emotions. If you're a jealous person, you're going to experience jealousy. If you're a person who gets worried very easily, you're going to be experiencing that. If it's you're a kind of a person who's impatient, you know, let's say, like my friend was talking about his guru and his to totally awakened master. But when they're going to go to the airport, and he flies to another country or another city, he has to be at the airport like four hours before the flight. Otherwise he gets super nervous. Okay, but that has nothing to do with her, his consciousness. He's awakened, but his body mind mechanism is designed in that way that if has to take a train or a plane gets super nervous so we may be able to fix some of these things working on ourselves by observing it or we may not but transcending is a much more easier way and there is less suffering and the reward is way, way more than ever before. By rising above it, by recognizing that I am really, my thinking mind, the thoughts that goes in here, sometimes goes into all these dark places, gets really, really, wow, what a creativity, what an amazing thing that this thing goes into all these dark places. And then can go to some other stuff, the power of its imagination of what it imagines. It's really fascinating but it's not who I am. It has no power over me. I have no desire in controlling my mind. I have no desire in, in manipulating it. I have no desire in using it to gain anything. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I'm simply observing it as you're observing me right now and I'm observing you. And that's it. It's there. It does its thing. And it's none of my business. What's going on in here, it's really none of my business. Because there's a lot sometimes going on and there are times there's nothing happening. It's just quiet. Sometimes it's just a long, I don't know how long it goes by. There's no thoughts. And then brrr, they come. Oh, he, what did he mean? He, he, he didn't look at you or, oh, they all invited everyone and they didn't invite you to, to go to play volleyball. And what does that mean? And that, you know, all this stuff are happening here and if you just 
begin to disconnect from it. Then you start to rise above all of them. You're watching your thoughts, not every word, but you're simply not like I'm going to watch my thoughts, what I'm thinking about and what it means. No, 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 none of that. You're simply aware of there's a radio station here. It's on, let's say you have BBC News or you have two, three different radio stations. You have two, three radios in your home. They're all on. And they're all blah, 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 they're talking. Maybe there's a song going on. Maybe there is a uh, soap opera happening. And maybe there is the news or advertisement. They're all on. Sometimes there's nothing. It's quiet. Who's aware of it? Who is aware that the mind is going crazy? Who is aware that the mind is quiet? How the craziness, the busyness of the mind is being observed by what? By who? To what do this get compared to? Something in, in you must always be in silence and be very still, absolutely not involved, that can hear the busy mind and be aware of its craziness. Because if you were your mind, you would have never known it exists. If you were your mind, it could have never dr driven you crazy because that would have been your only reality of your life, busy mind. If you lived in a dimension that is always cloudy, it's always cloudy, it's always like gray, you would have never known about the blue sky Blue, the concept of the blue sky would never even come to you. You would never think about it. Because the only reality you have is that the sky is gray. So you have nothing to compare it to or miss. Because there's no sunshine on a, on a blue sky. You were born into gray. Gray is the only reality you have. So there's no questions. Like, okay, you're a woman, you have two hands, right? Two, two ears, two eyes, or you're a man. You never think about if you had the third hand. Let's say you, we had another hand from here. We had the third hand, like a tail behind us. Do you ever think about, where is my other hand? Because that's, it's just no one, no one has three hands. And if you have three hands, then that's a disability and it looks weird. But imagine all human beings have three hands. But since nobody has three hands, you never think about it. It's just not in your reality. Same thing. Your mind is driving you crazy. In, this busyness gets compared to what? In comparison to what? In comparison to silence. Because you're residing in silence, you're here, like the Buddha, like this guy, you're just there, like this, Zen, still. The real you is sitting there on his throne, it's silent, and it's not moving. 
And because of that, you're able to observe objects that are moving. You can see movement happening because you're the one who's not moving. That's how you transcend. By recognizing this place inside yourself. And disconnecting from your thoughts and disconnecting from your feelings. You don't count your feelings as yours anymore. You look at them as visitors. They come and visit you. You have to feel them, of course, because they're here. You cannot not feel them. It's impossible. But you don't have to identify to them as they're yours. You change the way you look at them. You simply remember earlier I said, all you do is you change the way you're looking at something. And the shift happens. The transformation to the fifth dimensional consciousness, it occurs through the way you look at something through the way you're categorizing stuff. And you avoid other teachings, any other teachings that is not supporting this, you throw it away immediately because it's gonna help, it's gonna reinforce that you are someone separated. Your mind is yours. You have the ability to create and manifest. So now you're in this prison, rejected. I don't need to manifest anything because I'm just the still silent observer of manifestations. They all come in front of me and go. I don't need to manifest them. They all come and go. They're not even real. Because they can't stay there all the time. The only real thing is you, the I am. You are the only one who's real. I am the witness, the one which is here witnessing, observing, is the only real thing in the world. Everything else is an object, including your body, because you have been observing your body from childhood, growing, 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 growing. and it's just gonna keep evolving, changing, but it's going to re reach a peak that you're at your best. And then it's going to start declining. And that's another object. So disassociate from that too. I'm not saying don't take care of yourself. You shouldn't look beautiful. You shouldn't shower, clean yourself, dress nicely, enjoy eating good food, enjoy making love, enjoy. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you simply aware that this body is also a borrowed object for a short period of time. There's gonna be a time that this one is gonna have to go like everything else in your life. Your friends come and go, your family come and go, your lovers, your enemies, everything comes and goes. Nothing is going to stay. Your mind changes, your emotions changes, your desires change. They're all objects. 
And this is how you transcend and you enter in this higher level of consciousness, which is entering into the fifth dimensional consciousness. By rejecting free will, by rejecting these things, you just reject them all. I don't need to manifest anything because I am the oneness. Anything my body needs, existence will present it to you because it's an apparent life. It looks, it's happening in the world of duality. It's happening in a world of objects. Your body, your story is a part of the apparent world. It appears to be real. Well, the apparent world takes care of itself. You didn't take care of yourself when you were six months old, a year old, two years old. You just, you know, how many years now you're an adult taking care of yourself? Who was taking care of you before that? And you're going to get older to a point, if you end up living that long, that you're going to need help. Someone else has to take care of you. There's just this little period of time in between that it appears to be that you're capable of taking care of yourself. It just looks like it. Something else is taking care of you. The intelligence that created the world and created you and I, is the one who's responsible for your welfare, not you. you don't, you're not responsible for your own welfare. Your responsibility is to be still and silent. Everything else automatically comes to you. And not getting identified with your thoughts, with your emotions, with your body. If you can do that, then you are invited to join me. We can meet up in fifth dimension. Then you have become free. You have achieved freedom. And no matter what happens in the world, it doesn't touch you. No matter what happens to your body, it doesn't touch you. No matter what kind of thoughts you have, it doesn't touch you. No matter who broke your heart, it doesn't touch you. You have transcended. And you have become free. And then that's where your life really starts. Because fear disappears. I'm not talking talk, I'm not talking about physical fear. I'm not talking about somebody runs to me with a knife running towards me to hit me. Naturally, I'm going to dodge it. Or let's say I'm in the kitchen cooking and my friend sneaks on me and touches me. You know, it happens sometimes, your kids, your family, you know, someone comes and they walk behind you very quietly and they say hello and you just jump, you get scared, you get spooked. I'm not talking about that kind of fear. That's your nervous system is going to react to things. I'm talking about the fear that is hunting you all of your life. The fear of being left out the fear of being lonely, the fear of disease, the fear of not being good enough, the fear of not being loved, the fear of being broke. These are all thoughts. Fear disappears because you are not a person separated from the source. Whatever you do, whatever your will 
it's not you willing it, it's existence is a willing it through you. You have surrendered your free will to the will of that. That is operating through you. And that is the grand in intelligence who knows what to do, what to say, where to go. And that's, you. then you have transcended. I've got a question. Okay. Because you said that we can't manifest. And uh, up to now, I thought that I can manifest if I change my thoughts and I think positively about me, about my life, I can attract good things to my life. Right. And, and I think that it's true because when I was thinking bad about myself, I could uh, experiment bad things coming. Like, uh, you know, um, and now when I changed it, the way of thinking, I am... I feel better. I have. Um, I am attracting nice people. Uh, nice in the sense that they are, con they 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 are conscious and uh, you know they 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 are good. They they love themselves and you know I think that I ca I have changed it. I thought that I have changed it, <laughs> and now you say that it's not true. So how is well, it? It's difficult for me to understand it, that. It has changed itself. Okay. Even before you weren't doing it, it appeared that you were doing it. It looks like you are doing it. It looks like it's your idea. And it looks like you're thinking of some good people and you're manifesting some good people coming in your life. It looks like it. Because that's a part of the Leela of the life. That's what the source wants to do. Mm -hmm. it wants it's kind of like God let me put it in a very simple language it's like God is a trickster okay God is the master okay mm -hmm. now I'm just referring to God you know as you know in duality but I have to because there's no other way the creator that it's playing this game with itself because it's in every being, everything in the world. Everything in the world is made out of the body of God. So, because in its original state, it's only, it's only is. The oneness, when we say, I want to become one, there is no such a thing as one. One doesn't exist. It's either nothing, nothingness, or it's two plus, whatever, three, four, five, go to billions. One doesn't exist because one against what? If in oneness, there is nothing to compare yourself to that you say, oh, you know what? I got enlightened and I'm one now. That one is, is just a concept for the spiritual seeker who's trying to become one with God. It's got this concept of oneness. But one, once you come to oneness with God, there's no more ever, ever any thought about oneness because it's like, oh, there, there is no duality. There's no two. It's, it's oneness. It's always oneness. There's never been anything else. You don't even think about it because it just doesn't exist. Now back to what you said. Why did I say this thing? is this is infinite being is the power it's just raw consciousness raw being raw raw power is and it's just is god in its original state it's just is it's not anything 
Well, there's nothing to compare itself to. It just is. There's nothing else. So in order to look at itself, because it needs to create time and space, So in time space, objects appear. You can create objects in time space because outside of time space, there's just nothing, it's just is. We cannot comprehend it in this way, but you have experienced it because you are a part of it. This is I, I will use some examples and you're going to realize that you, you, because it's all of us, we're all that. It's not like separated. The only thing is we've never, no one has ever really pointed out to, to us and show us like, okay, this is, look, look, look over there, you know, look at that. Because all our teachings and everything up to this point is always about you are separated and you have to work your way to get to that. So you're going to use your mind, you're going to da, 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 all this stuff. All of a sudden, this teaching comes, which is very radical. And it's not very much like welcomed or it's not very much like popular. It's very like, it's not going with the stream of the neo spirituality that everyone's going that in that direction because there's goodies in there. You're going to get something. So it's very exciting. Here, this raw presence, this raw rawness, which every night when you sleep, if you don't dream, where do you go and what happens to you? When you sleep at night, and if you don't dream, I'm not talking about the first level of sleep because First level of sleep, you have high REM and you have vivid dreams. You wake up in the morning and you're tired because it was busy. Your mind was busy. Then there's the second level of sleep, which the REM is lower. You sleep, you wake up the next day, but you're not 100% rested. You know you were dreaming, but you don't remember any of your dream, but you know you were involved. Then comes to the third level of sleep that the REM is a lot less, but still when you wake up in the morning, you're not 100% rested because you know there was some sort of activity. Something was happening when you were sleeping. But then there's the fourth level of it, which it has extremely low REM level. And that's where you say, oh my God, I put my head down and eight hours, six hours, three hours after you wake up and you tell yourself, oh my God, I was gone. like you went into coma. Have you had that kind of sleep? Like you're completely rested, even if you sleep for one hour. Have you? Have you ever slept, Eva, that you woke up the next day and you're just 100% refreshed and you were gone? I don't remember that state. <laughs> Maybe we'll have this younger. Yeah, we all have had sleep that you sleep, and it's just the best sleep that you have. And you get up and you're completely refreshed because there was nothing going on in in your awareness when you were asleep. 
And where do you go? What happens to you? Okay, I sleep. Let's say I'm sleeping next to my wife. I'm sleeping with my girlfriend. I'm, I'm having my baby next to me. Okay, and I sleep. I wake up. During that period that I was asleep, everything's gone. I don't have a wife. I don't have any kids. I have no awareness of my body. I don't have any awareness of my name, my, my nationality, my sex. Where do I live? My financial problems. Everything's gone. When I wake up, the first thought that is going to come into my mind, which is the first thought comes into every human being's mind. Every single human being on this planet, regardless of their age, their, their skin color, their nationality, their religion, their sexuality, where they grew up, whether they grew up in a village or an island in the middle of Pacifics with no other human beings, or they grew up in New York City, they all have the same thought. Every human being, when they wake up in the morning, have the same thought. I, I thought, oh, I feel good. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I have to go to work. Oh, I have to go make something for my baby. Oh, I have to take my, my dog for a walk. Oh, I want to have a coffee. The I thought comes. And with the I, I am Zarathustra, then the world of Zarathustra comes to manifestation. Because the world of Zarathustra went back into its original state when I was asleep and not dreaming. There is no world. And there is no worries. And there is no enlightenment. And there is no sleepiness. And there is no poverty. And there is no terrorism. Everything disappears because you go back into your original state. Nothingness. Then when you come back into the world of duality, then there is a you, there is a world, and there is all these different things. Everything come back. And that's not the only time you experience that. Because you are that, because it's yourself, because that's your godliness, because you, 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 me, and everyone else is an, a thought. It's the God, God is dreaming you. You're not dreaming the world, you're being dreamt. You are in somebody else's dream. That, that's how powerless you are and we are. Someone is dreaming you. And you think you can do this and you can that, do that. And it looks like you're, you, you're capable of doing this, but you're being dreamt. Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, God, is a dreaming in time space because it's in original state. There's nothing. It's just is. Okay, maybe 200 billion years went by. Finally, it was like, okay, you know what? Let me just move a little bit. Let me start imagining things. So it's imagining this world. And since it's all the players, it's itself, it's okay to kill other people or rape other people because there's no other people. It's just doing it as in his thoughts. It's just she is thinking about raping someone. She's thinking about killing someone. She's thinking about 
being Einstein. She's thinking about being Mother Teresa or Jesus Christ. It's all in herself. She's imagining all these characters in her imagination. And since she is infinite, it goes infinity. It can forever and ever and ever, she can imagine different scenarios. But nothing happens because it's all happening in a dream state. And when you realize that, that's what I say you have transcended and you have become free because you realize that you are the imagination of God and you are God, not as a person. And therefore, your future and your life is already written. It's according to the script that the God is dreaming and you're just going to be exactly doing whatever she wants. So if she wants you to believe that you're manifesting something, she just imagines that. And then manifestation happens because she wants to keep you in duality. Because if she wants to go back to oneness, it's just nothing, it's just there. Okay, I'm done with that. Now I want to imagine something. So let me create this, create that. I'm gonna create a falcon. I'm gonna create an eagle. I'm gonna create a shark. I'm gonna create a dolphin. I, wanna, I want to live under the water. I wanna live under the ground. I wanna live in the sky and I wanna live on the ground. So I want to experience everything. It's like I hand you a credit card and I say, Eva, go to Harrods in London or Champs Elysees or wherever, and there is no limit on this credit card. Will you just go by, you know, just a hat and a shirt and say, oh no, I'm just going to save. It's, there's no limit on it. Go buy whatever you want. You, you go spend $50,000 on shopping on one day. And you can go shop again to, the day after because there's no limit on it. You can just keep buying as much as you want. Why would you just buy Oh, I'm only going to buy one croissant because I want to save. No. Exaggerate. Buy as much as you like because there's no limit. Same story with God. It's infinite power and it can be anything it is everything and it's everywhere all the time. Everywhere you look, you see God. That's where you become free because there are no others. There's no other human beings. There's no other people. There's nothing to be afraid because they're all that. And you are that. Hence, you weren't, you never were born and you're never going to die because you always are. You're always here. Here is the only place that exists and you are that. And there's a, it's not only just when you go to that level of sleep that you experience your divinity. It happens through a lot of different other stuff that you have experienced it in your life because you are one, it's almost impossible not to, yeah, you, you're that. So because you're that, you, there's no way you don't experience it. It's impossible. There's gonna be moments that you're completely one with everything. If you practice Tantra, Tantra sexuality, 20,000 year old art, or maybe more than that, why in India and some other countries, there's full of Tantric temples, 
statues of the yoni. You know what yoni is? That part of the woman? Stans statues of linger. Why do they have these temples and go worship? Because Tantra means divine oneness through the union of the two opposites. When the two opposites merge into each other, they lose their individuality, the sense of separation into the oneness. And if you ever practice tant tantric sex, which is different than ordinary boom boom sex that, that a lot of us experience, you recognize that in the act of making love, you have your eyes closed. Sometimes you need to open your eyes because you don't know if you're the boy or you're the girl, or you don't know if you're, you know, it, it happened to me like, I need to open my eyes. Am I the bed? Am I the wall of this house? What, where does this consciousness belong to? And, you know, I open my eyes and look, oh, oh, I'm the guy. Because I lost myself into the oneness. That's one thing. This oneness also happens to a lot of musicians or artists. A musician, you know, is playing his guitar or is playing his flute they identify very well with it because there are times like you lose any kind of sense that am I blowing into the flute? Am I the flute? Am I the speaker? Am I the audience? Everything disappears. You don't really know which one you are. You become one with everything. And then, you know, comes to kind of end of your performance or whatever or practice. You, three hours go by, your mom comes and knock on the door. Eva, Eva, come on, come to lunch, honey, you know, lunch is waiting. And then you come to yourself. Oh, wow, I was gone. How long have I been playing? It's been three hours. You disappear. You go back to your original state, the oneness. Or you're an athlete, you're running. You know, you're running like an hour, you're running like 10 kilometers and you completely lose yourself. You don't know if you're the ones running. You don't know if you're the shoes. You don't know if you're the trail. You don't know if you're the tr trees. You become one with everything. Running is happening from outside. If someone's watching, you see someone's running but no one is running. Running is happening on its own automatically. No one's doing it. There's no effort here. You just run. Running is happening. You're in complete oneness. Give you another example. Women giving birth. It has happened to many women throughout giving birth that the pain was so much that they popped out of their body and they go into this euphoric oneness state. I don't know if you've experienced it or not. I never experienced it because I never given birth, but I heard that, that it has, ha it does happen to some women that they go into this euphoric oneness place that they come back and they say oh my god it was unbelievable one more example people who take psychedelics or some sort of like ayahuasca or magic mushrooms or lsd it happened to a lot of people and it still happens to a lot of people like you 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 take some kind of substance and you are into complete oneness. And during the time you're in this oneness, you never say, oh my God, I am one with everything. During that period of time, you there is no you, you disappear. 
oneness is happening. After the effect of the drug is gone and you come back into this place of separation, you say, oh, you know what? Oh my God, I was gone. But not when you're gone. Because there's nobody there. So this has happened and is happening in our lives because that's our original state. And it's free. It's freedom. You become a human being, you're trapped, you're subject to suffering, you're su subject to desires, you're subject to fear, envy, all kinds of shit comes with it when you become a human being separated you go back into your you transcend this you recognize you're not your thoughts you recognize you're not your emotions but you do feel them and you recognize you're not your body then you have become free nice seeing you all